Hey everyone, Boss Man here, and I'm back. It's 2016. I'm excited because it's the 30th anniversary of Zelda, and I just want to talk about some of the latest ongoing, some of the latest news about the upcoming release of a remake slash remaster slash I don't even know what you call this thing, Twilight Princess HD. So. What, what do I want to talk about here? Well, specifically, I want to talk about Amiibo, the Amiibo functionality, and why I am really, really excited for Twilight Princess HD, but it also has me kind of worried, specifically worried about the future of Amiibo integration, uh, specific to, say, Zelda U at the end of the year. So I'm really excited about Twilight Princess HD for one primary reason. That would be the idea that there is reportedly an extra dungeon in the game. And this dungeon is unlocked by the Wolf Link Amiibo. Now, in general, this isn't a problem for me. I am going to own the Wolf Link Amiibo anyways. If it comes to a Zelda product, I want to own it. I've got, you know, a little Skurvo, all the stuff down here, I've got, you know, Skull Kid. The point is, is that if it's a Zelda product, I'm probably going to try to own it, especially if it is official merchandise. Still, a dungeon is locked behind the Wolf Link Amiibo. Reportedly, we, we haven't had this confirmed by Nintendo yet. Um, but some details we have had confirmed about some of the Amiibo functionality are things like uh, Zelda slash Sheik Amiibo will replenish hearts. Um, the Link Amiibos do something, I think it's Arrows, the Toon Link, and the regular Link from Smash Bros. Uh, they, I think, I believe they replenish your Arrows. And the biggest one is, besides the dungeon, is what the Ganondorf Amiibo does. And the Ganondorf Amiibo doubles the damage in the game. So everything, you know, they hit you for one heart, it hits you for two. If it hit you for a half heart, it hits you for a full heart. If it hit you for two hearts, it hits you for four, etc, etc, etc. Basically, it's almost like hero mode, in a sense, through an amiibo. Um, and the game reportedly, um, unconfirmed at this time, has a hero mode. Uh, so imagine hero mode that has double damage and doubling that damage. Um, that could essentially make this potentially um, one of the most punishing experiences in the game. Assuming that there is a hero mode and that the Ganondorf amiibo damage, double damage stacks on top of it, we don't actually know this, okay? So that's a pretty cool functionality has to do with Amiibo. Um, and honestly, all this functionality is what has me excited for the game because we didn't get the, necessarily the visual overhaul that I think a lot of people were looking for. <coughs> Hello, Wii U tech demo. Uh, but we did, uh, we, we did get primarily what I feel most of us care about uh, most when it comes to when they remaster games. Um, and that's new content and apparently a new dungeon. Uh, now we've had new dungeons before, Link's Awakening DX had a new dungeon, the Color Dungeon, um, A Link to the Past when it was re released on the Game Boy Advance uh, with Four Swords also contained a new dungeon. I sadly have not played that new dungeon, it's the only version of A Link to the Past I have not beaten. Uh, but still, the point is they've done this before. Now they haven't done it lately. Uh, Ocarina of Time 3D basically was the exact same game, upgraded visuals, um, they improved the, some of the mechanics in the Water Temple, and then they kind of added Master Quest on top, um, which was like a flip version of the world and did all this crazy stuff. Um, it's not the original Master Quest version that came out with the GameCube, uh, or the GameCube version of The Wind Waker in 2003. Okay? Uh, and then obviously we had the Wind Waker HD, basically the exact same game plus a quick sale and some changes to the Triforce Hunting Quest. Um, some minor tweaks seen in there, no more Tingle Tuner, in comes Tingle Bottles. Um, most of this was minor additions or changes to the games up to this point in terms of uh, new remasters or re-releases since 2011. And then in, uh, obviously, last year we got Majora's Mask 3D, they added fishing holes, made more changes to that water temple, um, it was the Great Bay Temple, and uh, some other minor tweaks here and there. But again, most of this is really minor stuff, uh, and obviously Twilight Princess HD has an entirely new dungeon, so put, reportedly, uh, unconfirmed, and uh, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, I'm excited for it. I'm not excited that all of this is tied to Amiibo. Now don't get me wrong, Amiibo are fantastic. I have my Link Amiibo right here. I love this little guy. 
for 13 bucks and his sword <laughs> is a little bent um, but for 13 bucks I have a nice little figure a nice little link figure I am okay spending $13 for you know what what's a pretty decent quality link figure now it's nothing compared to say this but I don't expect it to be this is $80 this is $13 I get it um, but I really 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 love Amiibo my problem is when Nintendo tries to lock content behind the Amiibo. Now, I don't care so much that tapping this thing replenishes hearts. It's basically replacing me smashing, or I'm sorry, tapping this guy actually replaces arrows. Um, and that's basically replacing me smashing pots. I'm, I'm totally cool with that. Um, it's not really a big deal. It reminds me a lot of the usability in Hyrule Warriors where you just kind of tap it and you get like bonus rupees and stuff like that. That's really minor stuff. Um, what bothers me about Amiibo is when you lock serious content behind it. And that's apparently, reportedly, what the Wolf Link Amiibo does. The entire new dungeon, uh, Twilight Cave, Twilight Cavern, um, I think there was a new name now that just came out of Japan, a recent report that it might be, um, that's completely locked behind the Wolf Link Amiibo, reportedly. Meaning you need to own that Wolf Link Amiibo, tap it on your gamepad, um, in order to unlock it. Now, as I said, it's not a big deal for me because I'm going to own the Wolf Link Amiibo. It's the concept that I have to own something else, a physical item that may be hard to find in certain areas of the world. You may not even be able to even buy it in certain areas of the world. And uh, I need to own that in order to access content in the game. Um, that bugs me. Now, uh, this is like a remaster and a remake. So there's a lot of arguments that anything new that they add to it should really just be available from the start, right? I mean, if you're releasing the full game, the bonus content should be in it. Um, imagine if, as an example, this guy, that Amiibo existed back when the Wind Waker HD came out. And they decided, you know what, we're going to add the Swift Sail to the game. Right, a pretty big change, a change that would make even more people enjoy the Wind Waker. But you needed to own this guy to use the Swift Sail, to unlock the Swift Sail. Um, does that seem right to you? That you need to own this little $13 figure that might be hard to find to unlock the swift sale and that's kind of what you're looking at with wolf link except it's even more substantial see the swift sale doesn't actually change the game it just makes sailing a bit quicker well a lot quicker and easier to explore however it doesn't actually change the game um addition of a new dungeon could necessarily not change the main story but it's a big enough chunk of content that you're locking out with an amiibo that it makes me worry. Um, and what makes me worry even more is that this Wolf Link amiibo supposedly can transfer data from Twilight Princess HD over to Zelda U. Now we don't know what data this is, we don't know what impact it has on Zelda U, but what it does mean is that amiibo are gonna play a role in Zelda U, including Wolf Link amiibo and whatever brand new amiibo they come out that are probably gonna look absolutely fantastic and I'm gonna own them all and me owning it's gonna tell Nintendo that I support what they're doing with amiibo and I totally don't, and I know that that's bad customer, bad Nate, bad boss man. Um, but at the end, I, I I don't know what I'm supposed to do, what else I'm supposed to do besides not buy their Amiibo, but I want the Amiibo. I just don't want the Amiibo for the reasons Nintendo is trying to tell me I want the Amiibo. I don't want content locked behind Amiibo. I don't want this new dungeon in uh, Twilight Princess HD locked behind Wolf Link. I don't want to transfer data from one game to another game with an Amiibo, especially when those games are both on the same system, on the same hard drive, and can easily just talk to each other by knowing, hey, we're on the same system. Awesome. Um, it's almost like a hassle. And then there's the idea that, say I save some data to that Wolfling Amiibo, what happens if I lose that Amiibo? I have three children. What happens if one bites the head off, another one throws it in the garbage can, and I never see it again? Um, am I still going to be able to transfer that same data with a new Wolfling Amiibo? Am I even going to be able to find a new Wolfling Amiibo? Um, or when I re-register that Wolfling Amiibo, does it just erase all my progress in this new dungeon or whatever? Um, a lot of questions. These questions shouldn't exist because content, significant content, should not be locked behind Amiibo. Um, in many ways, I think Nintendo has misunderstood why Amiibo are popular. They are basically collector's items. I mean, let's be honest. If you own Amiibo, it's because you probably want to own, you either want to collect all of them because you're a huge collector, 
or you just want to own little affordable figures of your favorite Nintendo characters. Uh, that's why I want to own them. And I... Nintendo, man, I, I... It's the 30th anniversary of Zelda. All we should be doing is celebrating Zelda all year. We have Hyrule Warriors Legends, Wind Waker HD, Zelda U, uh, Symphony of the Goddesses, and so much great stuff probably coming in addition. Some, you know, there's supposedly a trading card game coming, and... I'm sitting here for my very first episode of the year of the 30th anniversary of Zelda telling you that amiibo functionality kind of sucks and Nintendo needs to stop what they're doing. Um, yeah. So I'm excited for Twilight Princess HD and all the bonus content and that amiibo aren't really a barrier necessarily for me but they could be a barrier for you, they could be a barrier for someone and I do not support this at all even though my money says that I do. Yeah, happy 2016, 30th anniversary of Zelda. This is the boss man, and I'm signing out. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed this very first episode of the boss man in 2016. If you enjoyed this episode, we'll be having one almost every single week on Wednesday. You just have to like and subscribe and share this video around and you will see this every single Wednesday. Uh, we're actually looking to expand video content even more. We have Zelda Inquiries that we started late last year. Coming back soon, our first episode's already recorded. It's already in editing and all of that great stuff. Uh, we also have a lot of more, a lot more exciting things coming, a lot more editorials and all that great stuff over on our official website, ZeldaInformer.com, where you can also find the entire Bossman series and Zelda Inquiries and uh, rewriting Twilight Princess, which is a, not as bad as it sounds. It sounds like it's someone who hates Twilight Princess. Um, not true. Rewriting Twilight Princess is a fantastic editorial series by Tyler Meehan, also known as Alpha. He's one of our copy editors, did a fantastic job. Um, he absolutely loves Twilight Princess, and he's probably more excited for Twilight Princess HD than anybody else on our staff. So, yeah, the, that's, the, that's what I got. Um, happy 2016, everyone, and I will catch you next week.